time than right now. For you to turn. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. So please turn. How's everybody doing today? Everybody doing well? Good, good. Awesome, awesome. Glad to see everybody here. Happy Father's Day to the fathers and the yeah, all the fathers and uh, thankful, thankful for you know uh, just continuing to have fathers and, and sons and daughters' lives. So uh, I'm thankful just for the opportunity to, to be a father uh, and uh, to uh, raise my children. And uh, I'm sure you guys are as well. So continue to move forward in that. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get right into what uh, we have been looking at for the absolute longest, but there's so many different aspects to this thing that we've been talking about concerning the new covenant. We have been looking at this for uh, a long time now, talking about the new covenant and all that it entails. And what we've been, uh, we initially brought to in our first study concerning the new covenant was showing that it was a wheel, that it's a wheel. As that's exactly what it is versus the old covenant. Uh, the old covenant was an agreement between God and man where God said, if you man do this, then you'll receive this in return. If you don't do this, then you'll receive this. And uh, what you receive was the blessings versus the curses. If you, if you do it, you'll receive the blessings. If you don't, you'll receive the curses. Well, the new covenant is different. It's not a covenant between us and God. It's like a wheel, like I said. It's a covenant between God the Father and Jesus Christ. And again, I always use myself as the example of that. That's an example of me in covenant with the, uh, um, the people that I have a, a wheel in place for my children. I'm in covenant with them, where, at, or even using life insurance as an example. There's a covenant between me and them where I pay this certain amount. And as I continue to pay this certain amount and do exactly what they require, they are then required to give to my children what it is that I have purchased for them. And, and the will will state exactly what that is, what it is that I purchased for them. Well, the new covenant is the same thing. Jesus Christ accomplished some things and did some things for us. He initially what came and lived the absolute perfect sinless life. He lived a sinless life, a life that we couldn't live, that we couldn't accomplish, that we couldn't do. He came and lived that for us, and in him doing that, he became the perfect sacrifice to pay the penalty for our sins. God again is what? Is at a place where is at a place where <laughs> is at a place where he he again has to deal with the sin issue. It's God is not one who just overlooks it and acts like it never happened. No, he said, I deal with it. And how I dealt with it, why, by what? Having my son live the perfect life and paying the penalty for our sins. And again, and through that, again, just like I just said in the prayer, not only did he do that, but he removed the sins as far as the east is from the west, it says. And not only that, but he was raised from the dead to become our everything. And again, the picture of that again is what? As a result now of me in agreement with the will, uh, with the, the, in covenant with the insurance company, again, my children will be able to receive that inheritance of whatever it is I agree to with the, the uh, insurance company. What's well, the same thing with when it comes to Jesus Christ? He provided for us everything, his righteousness, his life, his love, his joy, his peace, uh, everything he is, he says, I provide it for you. And this is the thing. You find it in me in the resurrected Savior when I was raised from the dead. And so that's what makes it, it like a will. And again, when it comes to using the example of my children, at the time of my death, what is going to have to take place with my children in order for them to receive that inheritance? They're going to have to, what, first hear and someone is going to have to walk them through the process of showing them everything that they have been made available, that has been made available by their father. Yeah. It's the same thing with us. The Holy Spirit is there to walk us through the process of showing us this is all that you have in Jesus Christ. You have his love, his joy, his peace, and this is what he wants to do in and through you. He walks us through the process, and that's all our role is in this whole thing. 
is coming and allowing the truth of Jesus Christ, the truth of all that he's provided to be worked in our hearts by the Holy Spirit so that we can partake of it, receive it, and walk in it. That's the main goal. And what I always talk about is that uh, um, in the initial aspect of when we are first saved, we don't know all of what Jesus Christ has provided. We don't know all of that. We have to be walked through that process. But how God looks at it as, he says, when you first heard that gospel message, a seed was planted in your heart. That gospel message was seed. It was planted into your heart. But just like any natural seed, what has to happen in order for that seed to develop? It has to be water. It has to be water. In order for that seed, once it's placed in the ground, for it to develop and to begin to form a tree, form a, whatever it is, a plant, it has to be watered in order for it to break open. And that's the picture of what it is for us. And where I, what we find terminology that speaks of that is over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. And this is what Paul says. He says, who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers through whom you believed? He says, as the Lord gave to each one. He says, I planted Apollos watered but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. So Paul here is using himself and uh, uh, Apollos as examples of ministers. And he says, Paul says, I was the one, in the, when it came to you, Corinthians, who planted. Meaning what? I was the one who initially came with the gospel message that as it was planted in your heart, salvation came to, to pass in your heart and life. When he says, Apollos water, and what is that an example of? That is an example of them being those individuals being developed in the truth of all of what Jesus Christ has provided. That's what he says, Apollos uh, was an example of. Paul came with the initial message and Apollos is the example of the pastor of the church who is over where these individuals came together or ministers or elders where these individuals came together and were now developed in all of the truth of, of who Jesus Christ is and all that he's provided and all that he's made available. And so again, that's the two examples of, of different types of ministers. One who, who plants and one who waters, and he says, God is the one who gives the increase, meaning God is the one who, as that seed is watered, he's the one who causes everything that he wants to take place to happen in our hearts and our lives. And so he, he goes on to say in verse 8, now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. And so he goes on to say in verse 9, he says, for we are God's fellow workers. Meaning what? The, the people that plant and the people that water. And he says, and you are God's field. Meaning what? You're the location where the seed is planted and that seed is watered. And so he goes on to say, you are God's building. And we've talked about this before. Well, Paul now is changing the analogy, describing the same thing, but changing the analogy. He says, now you are God's building. So initially he talked about you being a field where the seed is planted and water. Now he's about to talk about you being a building where the foundation is laid and you what build on top of that foundation. And so he goes on to say, according to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, which is what? The exact same as what sowing the seed or planting the seed. Right? And he says, and another builds on it, which is what? The exact example of what? A person watering that seed. And then he says, what? But let, now this is the thing, but let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And so he says, look, it, there's no other foundation, there's no other true seed other than the true gospel planted in your heart that's going to lay the foundation of salvation in anybody's life. But he said, but beware of how people build on top of that foundation. Yes. Meaning how people again build on that foundation of Jesus Christ, calling it of Christ, calling it of the truth, call, how they 
attempt to develop people as Apollos was in, in truth saying that this is who Christ came to be for you. Saying uh, this is the purpose for which Christ came and now the ultimate view and understanding that they want you to have. That's what again pastors present and that's people building you up. But people can build you up incorrectly is what he's saying. That's why he's saying, take heed how he builds on it. Let the person who is building on the foundation of Christ, who's building on top of that, take heed how he builds on top of that foundation. Because again, he says, because no other foundation can be laid other than Jesus. So he's saying, if anybody laying any other foundation, ain't no salvation in that. But he's saying that if, though, but people can have the foundation of Jesus Christ, but build on top of it incorrectly. Y'all get that? And so he goes on to say in verse 12, Now if anyone builds on this foundation, the foundation of Christ, with gold, silver, and precious stone, wood, hay, and straw, he says, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Let's pause right there. So again, remember, he's still using analogies. He's, he's been talking about a foundation being laid and then a foundation being built on. So he gives the examples of what? Gold, silver, and precious stone, wood, hay, and straw as the two examples of things that a person can build on the foundation of Jesus Christ with. And he says, he says, and each one's work, verse 13, will become clear, meaning it's going to become clear what people are building up on the foundation of Christ with. And he says this, for the day will declare it. He says, because this is the why it's going to become clear, because it's going to be revealed by fire. Mm -hmm. By fire. Fire is going to reveal what a person is being, has been built up with. And again, when you think about it, we've mentioned this before, what does fire do to wood, hay, and straw? Consumes it, burns it up, turns it into ashes. But what does fire do to gold, silver, and precious stone? It refines it, purifies it. It does not consume it. That's why they can put that gold in 10,000 degree heat and it won't burn it up. It'll only purify, it will, it will, it will refine it. It will only, if there's anything intermingled in there, It'll consume all that, but the gold will remain. But with wood, hay, and straw, what does it do? It turns it into ashes, and you can't turn them ashes back into the wood, hay, and straw. Once they are burnt up, they're consumed. And so he says, uh, the fire is going to test each one's work of what sort it is. Mm -hmm. He says, it's, and again, he's still talking about individuals who are building on the foundation of Christ. If anyone's work, which he has built on it, Endures. What, what does that mean if it endures? That means if it's gold, silver, and precious stone. That's the only thing that's going to endure through the fire, right? So he said, if anyone's uh, work, uh, which he has built on, uh, um, um, endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. Yet so as through fire. So again, he's giving the example of these two groups of individuals. One individual is building with wood, hay, and straw. Another, gold, silver, and precious stone. He says the fire is going to come, and the fire is going to reveal exactly what it is that people are building uh, others with. And hear me, the fire is going to be reveal what we are built up with as well. Because I always say, if I am built, if I'm building others up with wood, hay, and straw, what does that mean? I'm built up with it too. And I, I can't build a, a person in gold, silver, and precious stone at the same time I'm built up with wood and straw. And vice versa. I, I, it, hear me. I'm, I can't be built up with, with gold, silver, and precious stone, but yet I'm building others up with wood and straw. Can't. I, I, you build an individual up with what you are built up with. Go ahead, sis. So, like, in verse 14, is it specifically talking about leaders and pastors and bishops, etc., or just anyone who shares the gospel of Christ? Anyone. Anyone in the body. Anyone. Because and what I always talk about <laughs> is that we are always, and we're going to define in a second what the gold, silver, and precious stone is. 
but we already kind of said it. But hear me, we are always expressing what it is we're built up with. And, and if whatever we're expressing to others, we're building them up with. Y'all get that? Go ahead, sis. <laughs> and I was like, let me find the scripture because I know it's in the first in the Genesis one. But as you were speaking, uh, and the comment that you made that okay, if you're made up of uh, uh, wood, mm -hmm. hay, and straw, then that's all that you're going to be able to reproduce. Yes, oh my. And the same with gold, silver, and precious mm -hmm. stone. My if that's mind. what I am made of, oh then that's what I'm going to reproduce. Yes. And the Lord just gave had me to go to. Uh, Genesis 1:11, and it, it it goes all the way back to the beginning, and Man. he said, and God said, let the earth bring yes, forth grass, yes, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit yielding fruit after its ah, kind, yes, exactly. <laughs> and whose seed is in itself Man. upon the earth, and it was so, and so, and it says, and the and the earth brought forth grass, so. The grass can only bring forth That's grass. That's the fruit can only bring forth fruit. That's it. If there's anything else my that's my. in the midst of that, That's which God said yes. is going to happen yes. in the church, yes. we're going to have the fruit, we're going to have the tears. Yes. But there's that separation oh, my. My that my. will, you know, and again, that's that, like we've been talking about, the trials and things that we're going to mm -hmm. go through, mm -hmm. then it's going to be evident, yeah. not to bring embarrassment, mm -hmm. but because God is a loving God. Yes. But I've got to mold you, daughter yes. and son, and I need to take you through these things. Yes. Not that he's bringing upon us. Let yeah. me make uh, yeah, correction. Yeah. Okay? okay, But those things that are going to happen because we're the church. Nah, nah, nah. But he's doing it. I mean, those things are happening because he wants to refine yes, us as it. precious gold, silver, yes. and, you know, not lacking anything. That's exactly, that, that is exactly, <laughs> exactly, she just went through all the about what you're about to go through in just a second. But, but that's good, though, and that is so true, and it's so true, again, just like I said, uh, um, um, it bears an after its own kind. Yes, yes. I'm, again, wood and strong, that's all I can right, produce. That's all I can produce. And again, the same thing uh, with with uh, uh, gold, silver, and precious stone. That's, that's what, if, if that's what's in me, that's what's going to come out. That's what. So again, that with going back to your question, that's for individuals who are just regular individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, or, and I always say, give me, everybody's a minister. Mm -hmm. I always say that mm -hmm. everybody's a minister because in anything that we express to anybody. In our lives, especially if we call ourselves Christians, if anybody knows that we're Christians, our lives, the way we talk, the way we present, is always ministering to people. It always is, and it's ministering whether wood and, and straw, or it's ministering gold, silver, and precious stone. Always. And he says, and the fire is going to reveal which one, again, we are being built up with. And again, he says, uh, talks about a reward. But again, if we notice here, because this individual, even though they're building with wood, hay, and straw, because they have on the foundation, he himself shall be saved. And that's the love of the Father. It, it is. <laughs> it, 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 him, it is it, it's not, he says he suffers loss, meaning he won't receive the reward, but he himself will be saved. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's through fire, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, my, my, my. Yeah, that's through fire. And so what we talked about is in, a, in defining the gold, the silver, the precious stone, the wood, the hay, and the straw, we said this. Because remember, let me just say this. Remember, the foundation, and I'm going to put it up there. Remember what the foundation is. Jesus Christ, the gospel message, the good news message of what Jesus Christ has done. That's the foundation. That is that seed that is planted that once it is planted, it brings forth salvation. A person is saved. But just like we said before, what? No one knows everything. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We, when we first get saved, we don't all know. <coughs> no, no. Most of the time, we didn't know what Jesus died for our sins. That's pretty much it. He, he died for our sins. I know he raised from the dead to be my help, to be that for me. To, to, that's all I know. But there is so much more for us to learn and understand. And what we talked about is that that's the picture of what we are built up with, the gold, the silver, and the precious stone. And before, go ahead, brother. Yes. Um, one thing we must realize, because 
Christ is the foundation. Yes. Um, then we got to recognize what the man Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, fire, wood, mm -hmm. and precious stones that he been through in his walk in this earth mm -hmm. in order to save sins. Yeah. Because uh, 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 he could have just came and died. Man, he should have died. But he saw fit. He knew at the time what he had to go through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he knew he had to go through it yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. And it basically, I will see that it's just a continuum mm -hmm. of him. Uh, 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 when we receive him, it's a continuum of the uh, 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 trying of the mm -hmm. uh, fire of mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To the point because. Um, he took away sin by dying to it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, in the earth. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, in a natural form. Yeah, yeah. That's the only way sin could die. That's exactly right. Why not? Mm -hmm. It is through death. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he lets us to know that even, but it's only through him yeah, that yeah. sin is dead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's why it is to receive him. Yeah, yeah. And, and as you do that, as you receive him, the pattern that he displayed in his earthly life mm -hmm. in going through the trials, the things mm -hmm. that he, the suffering that he went through, that that is a pattern and a picture for again what we partake of in him. Yes. As we as we operate and walk in him. And so what we talked about again is that when we talk about that gold, silver, and precious stone that God says, I want individuals to be built up with. We broke it down into three things. Revelation. Revelation is what? My heart being made aware of who Christ truly has become for me. Nobody knows that when they first get saved. They don't have all that information. So what has to happen after I get saved? I need to be edified in that. I need to learn that. I need to grow in that. That is that building on that foundation. Wisdom. Wisdom is what? Understanding the application to my life of who Christ is now revealed to me as. Now that he is my righteousness, how does that affect my life? Now that he is my love, now that he is my joy, how does that affect my life? And I always use the example of what? Now that uh, 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 an example of wisdom is what? Now that Christ is my righteousness, what does that mean for me? I don't have to try to live by law to be righteous. I don't have to try to live by law to live righteously. Okay, what does that, how does that affect me? Well, the Bible says those that are under law, sin dominates. Yeah. So now I understand God's wisdom in that is what? I sent Jesus to become your righteousness. Why? So that you can stop trying to be righteous on your own. Why? So that you can be free from that dominion that sin has. Y'all yeah. see that wisdom? Yeah. See, see, and see, that's things that people don't know. When they first get saved, they don't understand that. They don't understand that. And so that is when, when that is being taught, that is building on that foundation of Christ. And again, and last week we said knowledge. Knowledge is the view on life, myself, people, God, etc., that I have as a result of being uh, of Christ being revealed in me. And apply it to all things. And again, the example of that is just like what we just gave concerning the law. Now that I understand that that uh, um, um, the reason why God said I'm removing the law from you is so that 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 or the reason why God says I'm I'm uh, our Christ is your righteousness is so that to free you from law. And now that I I understand that he did that to free me from the dominion of sin. How am I going to look at God now? I'm going to no longer look at God as this taskmaster. That's just telling me I need to get it together. I'm not going to look at people and say, you need to get it together. You need to fix it. Why? Because that is what? Presenting law to them and causing sin to dominate them. See, not everybody understands that and sees that. And that's what again elders, leaders, ministers are there to edify individuals and in them pre presenting the truth of that, they're, they're building them up with gold, silver, and precious stone. But see, I, I can present to the people that you know what Jesus Christ uh, uh, um, uh, removed you from the law, so can't nobody say nothing to you about your foolishness. That, that, that ain't the reason. I, I, I 
can say that so you can just do what, what you want and can't nobody say nothing to you. See that? See, when I build people up with that, when I present that myself, I'm building them up with wood, hay, and straw. Am I making sense? I'm affecting how they see to see incorrectly. Now they can just do stuff and it's all good. Ain't, ain't no problem. You know, and it's oh Jesus, your righteousness. So, okay, if you just, you know, do that and do that, it ain't no big deal. You, you get what I'm saying? See, that is presenting the wrong view. Or even if I present law and tell people now that Jesus died, you know, so you can be forgiven, but then he 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 also said though, no, you still gotta keep the law and live by the law. Well, in doing that, what am I doing? I'm placing people back under the dominion of sin. So now they being dominated by sin, and so what they're going to do, they're going to be hypocritical, and they're just going to be lying and acting like they're living righteously when they're not. You get what I'm saying? See, I'm, when you do that, you build people up with, again, the wrong materials, the wood, hay, and straw. But when you present to them the true wisdom, the true revelation of who Christ is, and the true knowledge, you develop people in that, they are then edified and, and what they are being built up with gold, with silver, and with precious stone. And that's ultimately what God says he wants done with all of us. He wants us to be built up with the gold, silver, and precious stone. And going back to this scripture, what did we say? We said in verse 13, each one's work will, will become clear, meaning what a person is being built up with and what they're building others up with is going to become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work to see of what sort it is. So it shows here the fire is going to reveal whether or not what, what a person is being built up with. Whether or not they are being built up with the true revelation of Christ, true wisdom, and true knowledge, or the false. The fire is going to reveal that. And so what we talked about is we wanted to define, because remember, all of these are analogies. We, we found out what the gold, silver, and precious stone is. We know what the foundation is. And so we wanted to find out what the fire was. And we talked about this over here in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. He says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Look what he says. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is what? Tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so Peter here shows us what is the fire that tests. Trials. Various trials. He says that, he says again, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. And he says, this is the purpose, that the genuineness of your faith, though it is, test, is tested by fire, may be found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That, that's, well, I'll get to that later. But again, he shows us here that the fire is trial. Trials that we go through, that all Christians go through, just like Sister Juanita just said, all of us are called to go through trials. Things are going to happen in our lives that, that are going to be burdensome, that, that, that he said we're going to be grieved by. And again, this he calls these trials the fire that tests what a person is built up with. Whether or not a person, uh, whether a person is built up with wool, hay, and straw, or it is they're built up with gold, silver, and precious stone, the trials are going to reveal that. They're going to show that. They're going to they're going to reveal that. Look what he says over here in James chapter one, verse two through four. He says this. He says, "My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith." Produces patience, but let patience have it. Perfect is perfect work that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. Just like Sister One even said just a second ago. That the trials he's talking about here, that all of us go through, and we've talked about this 
um, on many occasions. We're not going to get it all the way into it, but this is what it ultimately does. It brings us all to a humbling place of reliance upon Jesus Christ. And if I am being built up with gold, silver, and precious stone, that's what it's going to do. It's going to burn up any of false revelation of Christ, anything else, and cause me to look to him and look to him alone. If I am built up with wood, hay, and stroke, it's going to consume all of that and leave me with nothing, doubting, questioning, wondering, straying away from the faith. As the scripture says, because I've been built up with, again, wood, hay, and straw. And he says, but the purpose of it is to bring us to the place of patiently relying upon Jesus Christ. Go ahead, sis. And you know, uh, like I said earlier about just the love of the Father, because his, his desire is for us to experience the fullness of his son. And you we will never experience the fullness if that foundation Man. that is there yeah. is built up on self. Exactly. It's built up on like you're saying the the you know the the wood, the hay, the yes. stubble, because that's never gonna last. You'll that's never exactly right. if you'll receive a temporary my, my, satisfaction, my, my. but it will never be never. Unto, you know it's like never. I said, it's unto his profit. Yes. God's profit yes. when it's built on yes. gold, silver, and stone. That's exactly right. And, and that fire, <laughs> again, like you're saying, with the love, the fire reveals it for us. Yes. The trials, again, that we go through, that again, they are, they are always, I've talked about this on numerous occasions, the trials that we go through are never there to take us out. The fire isn't there for that purpose. It's there to bring us to a humbling place where we rely upon Him. But again, that has to be something that I choose to do, though, when the fire comes. Did I get that? And so again, because in the end, what God is saying is that those trials are going to be a testing of your faith, but they're going to produce a patience, a humbling reliance, a patiently looking to the Lord. And look into him alone. That's what trials will do. And he says, and in the end, what's going to happen? When you patiently rely and look, look upon the Lord, he says, you're going to be made perfect. That word perfect is uh, 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 mature. And you're going to find your completeness in Christ lacking nothing. That's what he wants. Where, again, the only thing that's left is the gold, silver, and precious stone of the truth of Jesus Christ. That's the goal. That's what God is attempting to get us to. And, and so the trials bring that to pass. And so we've talked about the many examples of trial. We talked about reproaches. Many people, again, were disliking you because of your stance in Christ. That, that some people are just going to have this, this negative. And again, in many cases with Paul, it was Christians that had this negative stance towards him. Or it was individuals that when he came out of what he came out of, many of them were angry. Because again, and I talked about this before, because of what? It reveals to them that there needs to be a change with them too. Anytime that people see a change in you and the Lord doing something in you and they want to stay in their place, it can produce anger in them because they know in their hearts that change is needed. Y'all get that? And, and so that, that's an example of, of what we said was the trials. We talked about persecution, which was another one, people coming against you. And we also talked about the fact that trials also can be sicknesses. We've talked about that as well. Mm -hmm. And so we, again, I'm reviewing a whole lot, but we're, what we're going to talk about today is the aspect of, we've talked about sicknesses, and all of that. But now we're going to talk about the healing aspect of it. The healing aspect of when sicknesses come. When sicknesses come. And so we, we, we've talked about the fact that sicknesses, just like uh, persecution, just like, he said, needs, meaning being in time of needs where it's the tight. You know, when things are going on, it's like, my goodness, man, I don't know. What's... He said all of those fall under the umbrella of trials. And remember, trials are that fire. Remember that. That's an analogy. 
And so, again, but we talked about the fact that sicknesses were one of those as well. And we looked over here in Galatians chapter 4, where Paul talked about his trial. Look what he says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 13 through 14. He says, you know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. And so Paul here is talking about this physical infirmity that he had, this sickness that he had, that he called it a trial that was in his flesh. And so Paul was an example of an individual who had a sickness, who had something going on in his physical body. Another example was over here concerning Epaphroditus in Philippians chapter 2, verses 25 through 28. Look what he said. He says, yet I considered it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus. Look how he describes him. My brother, fellow worker, fellow soldier. He says, but your messenger and the one who ministered to my needs. He says, verse 26, since he was longing for you all, and was distressed because you heard that he was sick. Mm -hmm. This same brother who he called a fellow worker, a fellow soldier, a, a, his brother and a messenger to them, he said that this individual had a physical infirmity as well. And he was sick. Look what he says in verse 27. For indeed he was sick almost unto death. But look what he said. But God had mercy on him. Meaning what? He was healed. He was healed. He said, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Meaning, if I were to lose this brother, that would be a, a great detriment to me, is what Paul is saying. And he said, therefore I sent him the more eagerly, that when I, that when I, excuse me, therefore I sent him the more eagerly, that when you see him again, you may rejoice and I may be less sorrowful. So again, we looked at, again, those two examples of individuals who had trials of sickness. And again, with this guy, he said God had mercy on him, meaning he was healed. And with Paul as well, Paul was able to, again, overcome that sickness, whatever it was that he had, and able to move forward in the things of the Lord. Galatians was written early, much earlier, so he lived many years after that. And so he was able to make it through that trial, meaning he was healed as well. And so what we did was we did an initial study to show that there are two different groups of Christians who can become sick. There can be those that are truly, faithfully trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. They are looking to him. They're trusting in him. But that trial is simply a trial of fire that they are going through. And we use the example of Job in that uh, Job was told or, or uh, God said concerning Job that that sickness wouldn't be unto death. Uh, he, that's what he said. I Meaning he couldn't take him out. And so we talked about that that's a group of Christians that can have sicknesses, that can have things come to their, their lives that again ultimately won't take them out. But there were other groups of Christians. And, well, and let me say this as well. These group of Christians were always described as again, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier. Meaning what? They weren't in error. Were they perfect? No. Did they do everything right? No. But what was it? They was looking, they were truly looking to the Lord. They were truly trusting in Him. And that sickness was just a trial that they went through, again, for the purpose of what? Causing them to be brought to the place, place of truly patiently looking to the Lord. But there's another group that we've talked about, and we're going to talk more about them next week, where these individuals, the Bible said, they were in error. That these were individuals who had strayed from the truth, and they were literally, literally given over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh because of them being in error. And so I want to just describe those two things because 
We're going to talk about the second one next week. But this week, we're going to talk about the individuals that, again, are faithfully following Jesus Christ. Look into them, but have a sickness. Have had a sickness. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and how, we, how God ministers healing to them. And so this is the thing I, I, I want to, to look at. Remember we said, again, that sickness, again, is simply another trial. It's a trial. Mm -hmm. It's a trial. It's a trial in, in the flesh. And so, and remember that trials always are represented by uh, um, the fire. And so I also mentioned, again, over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 through 13. Look at what he says. He says, therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. No temptation, and let me pause right there. The word temptation in the Greek, what we said on many occasions, is the same word for trial. So this word here, when he says no temptation, he's saying no trial. See, a lot of times people use this scripture thinking that it's talking about a temptation to sin. No temptation to sin is overtake. He's not talking about that. He's saying no trial has overtaken you except such as is coming to man. Many, all these trials that we go through are common. Right. Common mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But look what he says. But God is faithful who will not, oh Jesus, who will not allow you to be tempted or tried mm -hmm. beyond what you can bear. Oh Jesus. He says, and how? He says, but with the temptation of the trial will make a way of escape. Oh my, That's right. that you may be able to bear it. And so my point with that is that God, with any trial that we go through, God has a way of escape. And what is that way of escape that we have talked about uh, um, uh, mostly? Allowing it to humble us and cause us to look to him. That's the way of escape of every trial. Any sickness, any, any need, any, any persecution, the, the way of escape is always humbling ourselves and looking to him. That's always the way of escape. That's always the way uh, to overcome. And again, we're talking about sicknesses now. It's the same thing with that. The, go, go ahead, brother. Wow. Um, the scripture comes to mind. I finally found it. What I actually was trying to explain is First Peter 14, 12. I mean, I, uh, 1 Peter 14, yeah, 12. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, mm -hmm. which is to try you, yeah, yeah. as though some strange thing happened to you. Mm -hmm. But rejoice, mm -hmm. inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, yes. that with his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceedingly joy. Yes. Yeah. Exceeding joy. Mm -hmm. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. Mm -hmm. For the spirit of for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On their part, he is evil spoken of. Mm -hmm. But on your part, he is glorified. Yes. And they say in that they say on their part, he is evil spoken of. Mm -hmm. They look and wonder why why would God let you suffer? Mm -hmm. But, but within you, the spirit that abides in you, knowing that he's glorified. Oh, my. <laughs> and, and that is so true, especially when we look at the book of Job. Because, again, mm -hmm. the, the trials that Job went through, it's the three friends he had were, again, misrepresenting yes. God in yes. what they were saying concerning what Job was going through. And again, so that's exactly what you're saying. So in, from their standpoint, he's, he's being blasphemed. But yes. you and your going through that, Christ is going to be glorified mm -hmm. out of that. Mm -hmm. And again, so again, going back to this, the, the way of escape, I've mentioned again, and we talked about that before, is the humbling yes. and reliably looking to Jesus Christ. That's always the way of escape. And that's what I, I want to go back to. But I want to show as well that God, he's saying, God is faithful. Mm -hmm. and, and he will not allow you to be tried beyond what you can bear. Right. And how he does that is saying, I have made a way of escape out of that. Mm -hmm. And that is what? Humbly relying and looking to me as a result of the trial that you mm -hmm. go through. As a result of the, the things that you, you're going through. And so again, 
I'll say that that is the same thing when it comes to sicknesses as well. Mm -hmm. It's that those trials of sicknesses, again, are there to bring us to the place of humility, and that place of humility is the way of escape. It's the way out. It's the way out of the trial that we go through. And this is even for, again, for the examples of Paul, when he went through the trial, again, it was there to produce a, again, and when we've talked about this before, all that Paul was called to, all that was revealed to him, man, could have easily trump, uh, 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 puffed him up. That's right. Could have easily done that. And so the trials that he went through, one of them being a physical sickness, brought him to the place of a humility mm -hmm. that caused him to look to Jesus Christ. And I believe the same thing with this guy, Aphroditus, who was, a, again, his brother, a fellow worker. This wasn't someone that Paul described as being in error. But what was the goal of what he was going through? To bring him to the place of humbly relying upon the Lord even more. Although he was already a fellow worker, a fellow soldier, one who was moving in what God had called him to. Although he was already doing that, God was still at the place of saying that, that that greater humility is even needed more with you. And so again, what I'm ultimately saying is that that is God's way of setting up a way of escape for us. Mm -hmm. Escape of any trials that we go through. Again, whether it be persecution, reproaches, needs, whatever it is, God is saying that through humbly looking to him, I'm going to bring you out. I'm going to bring you out. Humbly looking to him. That's the way of escape. And so again, again, what are we talking about? We're talking about healing. Healing, the healing aspect of when people are sick, saved individuals. And we're specifically talking about individuals who are in error, who aren't, haven't gone astray, who are truly looking to Christ and they, they want the truth of what Jesus Christ has done, but they may have a sickness come. They may have a sickness come. So he's saying here, the way of escape for them, again, is that humbly looking to him. And so I'm, I'm, I want you guys to go over, uh, look over here to Job, where it talked about Job, because remember we, we mentioned that Job is the type and shadow of all of the fire that we go through. That's what this book is. That whole book is about that. It is a, a representation, a uh, type and shadow of all of the trials. He, he went through all of them. <laughs> he went through all of them. And again, it's a type and shadow of what it is that we go through. And so now I want you to uh, look at this. He says in verse 2 of Job chapter 2, And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth? Look how God describes Job now. There is none like him on the earth, a blameless man. This isn't Job describing himself now. This is God describing Job. He said, none like him on the earth, a blameless man. An upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, and still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. And so again, what I want to notice here is that, that God describes Job as a blameless, upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil and holds fast to his integrity, although he went through the previous trials that he went through of, of losing his children and, and his workers and all of his, his, his farms and, and all of his money, everything he had. He lost all of that because of Satan. And he, he so Satan then says, okay, well, well, if he has to go something through his physical body, though, he'll curse you to your face, man. He, he, he ain't going to be this upright integrity man then and so he goes on to say in verse 5 he says this is saying but stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh 
and he will surely curse you to your face. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. So, so Satan went out from the presence of the Lord, and who struck? What did he say? God? Oh, Satan. Satan struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his hair. And so remember when we talked about the fact that trials, who's behind all of those? Satan. Mm -hmm. Not God. But what does God say to my role in it is? I use it. I don't make it happen. I'm not there making reproaches happen to you. I'm not there making sickness happen to you. Satan is behind that. I'm not the one causing any of that to happen, but I use it. I use it as the fire that is going to what? Again, going back to that, that is going to reveal what you are built up with. Yes. What you are being built up with. And so here, Job was struck with a, a, a sickness, painful balls all over his body. He said in one place, he was scraping. This, he was trying to scrape the stuff off his skin. He was so uh, uh, um, sickened by it, so hurt by it, and, and so weak by it. And so my point with that, y'all, is to show that, again, this sickness that he had, God, it, it wasn't because of, it, none of it says that he was to be blamed, he, he was unrighteous, it, it didn't say he was one who had no fear of God and who loved evil. Did it say any of that? No, it, it said that he was blameless, upright, one who fears God and shuns evil. Now we all we keep mentioning what? That this represents not an individual who perfectly does things right. It is someone who, again, simply looks to the Lord and truly in their heart want what the Lord has provided. Go ahead, sis. Because that's even like um, when you're looking at people that are terminal ill. Yeah. yeah. Then you you we're looking at mm. their flesh. Man. And we're seeing terminal illness Man. eat away at their flesh. But you don't know what is going on with that the mindset sense. of that person. Right. They could right. be having a one on one with Christ, Man. whether it be someone coming in constantly Man. Man. and revealing Christ to them and Man. they're learning of his truth Man. and they're learning of what he has done for them Absolutely. and they're learning of, you know, he is the healer. Yes. And, yes. But, you know, you got one member coming Man. in and they're pouring that in. Man. But then you got the other member coming in and they lay beside the bed crying My and tears, goodness. watching goodness. this flesh just deteriorate. Man. But you thinking that, okay, now that they done pull the plug and mm -hmm. you're, the mm -hmm. line is flat mm -hmm. and you have transcended from Man. this life to the other. Oh, Satan has won. My, my, my. But only if they knew my, that my. God is bringing you home, Absolutely. even with the revelation Absolutely. of Jesus Christ, just because you did not Proceed in this earth, yes, that's you, exactly. you have still been healed. Oh, you just transitioned from the, this body into your glorious body. It's just amazing how you can't look at the flesh mm -hmm. and make a decision on a person's life. A absolutely, and, and that is so true, and even vice versa. Again, just because a person say like they are just healthy and they yeah. walking in, you okay. don't know the truth of the error right. that's, that's so going on. on you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, just like you said, you can't look at that. And again, what happened with Job, if you were to read uh, uh, all of the, the chapters after that, but his friends, they called him, kept talking to him. They kept on uh, um, presenting this incorrect understanding of who they said Job was and why he was sick and why he was going through all he was going through. They kept on saying that, oh, it's because he's he, he, he not blamed. He's not righteous. And they He's were not upright. And they were dictating that yes. by his flesh. Yes. Exactly. That's what they were looking at. They were looking at the trial yes. that he was going through. And so my, my point is that with God, who knows the heart, yes. who knows what's, what, what this man and where he is, he, he knew again where he was. And he knew the purpose for all of this. Mm -hmm. He knew the purpose for all of this. And, and that's what I'm, I'm attempting to, to, to get to, y'all. Because what, what do we say we're talking about? We're talking about healing. Mm -hmm. And we know Job was healed. But this is chapter 2. You know when Job was healed? Chapter 42. Mm -hmm. 40, 40 chapters later. Mm -hmm. And what does that show? That something was needing to take place in between his sickness and the healing. With him. And again, this is why I keep going back when I use these examples. 
of this individual, Aphrodite, a fellow worker, not someone in, in error, but he was sick. But again, the purpose of it is what we, we've been talking about for the longest, is that it was a, a, a humbling mm -hmm. of him, of causing him to look, again, just like I talked about with any child, it's a humbling that causes us to look mm -hmm. to him more and more. And the same thing again mm -hmm. with Paul. It was a humbling, uh, um, a humbling uh, 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 trial that Paul was going through that had a purpose of, of, of bringing him to a place. It's just like, again, what Paul mentioned over in, in, in Corinthians where he said that, that I have been given this thorn in the flesh because I have these massive revelations. I've been given this thorn of the flesh so that I am not exalted above measure. Mm -hmm. And so that as I realize my weakness, what happens? Christ can be strong in me. That's the purpose. And, and with Job, it was the same thing, y'all. It was the same thing. It was a, a humbling uh, with him where, where, again, even for those that are upright, who truly want the Lord, who truly want Christ is provided, there's still a humbling that takes place with us. Well, and trials are there for that purpose. Now let, let's look at over here. What I said, it was in chapter 42 where he was healed. Now look at what he says here. This is Job speaking. And he's talking to God. He says, then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You ask, who is this who has counsel without knowledge. This was uh, God initially talking to Job. That was the question he had asked Job. He said, once you ask me that question, he said, therefore, I have uttered what I do not understand. Things too wonderful for me which I do not know. Look what he goes on to say. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said, I will question you and you shall answer me. He said, I have heard of you by the hearing of ears, but now my eyes see, oh Jesus, mm -hmm. my eyes sees you, and therefore I abhor myself and I repent in dust and ashes. And this is the, the, the point I'm, I'm trying to show with this, y'all. In all of the trial that Job went through, in between chapter 2 and 42, he went through all those trials, he went through all those friends uh, um, telling him all the wrong reasons for why the things that were going on in his life were going on. And he finally had a dialogue with God where God revealed to him, yes. I am the I am. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one. I, I'm the only one who can control things. I'm the only one who, who has the power to, 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 to do. You don't. There's a, and, and, and if we, and I, again, we didn't have time, but in some previous chapters, he talked about Satan. He didn't mention Satan by name, but he talked about him, that you're not strong enough mm -hmm. for what he has. So, again, you have to look exclusively and completely to me. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, he, and when he eventually, Job answered, he said, after I had this interaction with God in the midst of my trials, this is what I, I realized. This is the conclusion I came to, that before... I had heard you about hearing the beer. But now in the midst of this trial, you revealing yourself to me, I now see you. And again, what I'm saying with, with even Paul, even Epaphroditus, they knew God. They were spreading the truth, but there was something that as they went through what they went through, that they had God reveal himself to them mm -hmm. in a greater capacity. And as a result of that, it brought them to the place of humility. Same thing with John. He says here in verse 5, I have heard of you by the hearing of ear, but now my eyes see you. Mm -hmm. Good point, sis. You know, that was, that was my initial experience with the transition from being under law into grace. Mm -hmm. It was a revelation of wow. Mm -hmm. You are, Man. therefore I am not. Man. Therefore I need you in Man. order to be with you and come with you. Man. That's what grace does. It, it, you will think because you're 
like the commandments and all mm -hmm. that. The commandments, we cannot mm -hmm. keep them. Mm -hmm. Because we look at the 10, but there's over 600 oh, and some exactly. commandments. Exactly. And they were never meant for us mm -hmm. to look at and mm -hmm. try to keep. Mm -hmm. They were always there to say, he is. Yes, exactly right. And I'm not. That's exactly right. Therefore, I need him. That's exactly and so right. when it's even in coming into grace, the beauty of grace, mm -hmm. grace mm -hmm. teaches me that he is. Yes, exactly And right. I'm not. That's exactly And right. I, I have to always cling and rely on yes. and trust in him. Yes. Constantly. Yes. And so the same experience Joel was having mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. in his body physically mm, yes, yes. it's the same when we even have spiritually exactly when we right. have a revelation of he is mm -hmm. and i'm not exactly and lord right. i have to depend on you even in the minute things yes. the smallest of things yes. i have to look to you for and and, and that is so true and if y'all remember last time i think it was last time we talked about how there's this training that comes by grace mm -hmm. where again it brings us like you said to that place of humility when we look to him, and there's also training by the fire, and he does the same thing, and it brought Job to the place where he said, I abhor myself, mm -hmm. and I repent in dust and ask me what, I want nothing of me. I don't want what my will is, I don't want what I can try to do, I don't want what I can make happen, I don't want what I can fix, I want what you can do. I abhor all of that. And in the midst of the trials that he went through, he says, I see you now for who you are as that everything that I need. And it was in the midst of trials. It was the midst of, in the midst of, of him going through that, that he came to this place where he said, I call myself and I repent in dust and ashes. And immediately after that, what happened in verse 10? And the Lord restored mm -hmm. Job's losses. My goodness. Mm -hmm. When he prayed for his friends. In the, in the verses between 7 and, and, and 8 and 9. That's where God talked to his friends. And rebuked them for all the stuff that they were saying. And he says look. Go to Job. Let him pray for you. You wow. offer sacrifices. He says because I will see him. Wow. And, and so he says. And the Lord restored. After his friends were sent to Job. And the Lord restored Job's losses. After he prayed for his friends, indeed the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And, and so when he said he restored, he not only restored all of the cattle, all that, but his health as well. Mm -hmm. Hear me. But what was the difference between verses chapter 42 and 2? Job had to go through the process of being brought to that place. Where he says, I pour myself and I repent in destinations. And my point is that that's what all trials are there to do. And that's the way of escape. So as he did. And then you know that if the Lord restored in verse 42, he could have did it in chapter 3. Right. Mm -hmm. He could have did it back then. But he didn't. Why? Because there was something that he needed broke in Job, mm -hmm. which was what? This abhorring, him seeing him. I have heard of you by the hearing of hearing. Now my see you. Oh, Jesus, go ahead. My God, you know, just hearing you talk about that, it just shows how Job is a picture of the law Man. and grace. Man. There was a side of the law when Man. he kept sacrificing Man. in order for change to be made, Man. but you know this law didn't bring about change. Because as many sacrifices that he made, Mama. those children never changed. Never. And then you had grace, which means the heavy burden that he oh, carried man. within his own body with that infirmity Man. is the same burden that kept Christ carried to the good. cross. That's good. It's that same burden that he carried. Mm -hmm. And in the process of that, a revelation came about, Man. which is grace. That's exactly and right. as yeah. that was put on the cross, like yes. everything that he did, mm -hmm. once it was finished, Man. it was through Job, oh, just like through Christ, my God. his friends were set oh, free. And it wasn't right. even through the friends himself, themselves couldn't even come to God. And he said but, that in the scripture too. But it was through Job Man. that the friends were that, set free. Oh, and the same thing with, with Christ, my that God. heavy burden, that heavy load, that my cross, my, my. once it finished the work that it needed to do, my, my. that's when the friends, that's my, us, my, my. he calls us his oh, friend. Yes, that's, that's when we were set free. Yes. Oh, and that's man. just a picture of yeah, yes, it, what yes, the law yes, produces, 
Absolutely. versus what grace produces. Absolutely. And the law was by Job mm. making the sacrifices mm. and doing what he thought would be done to save the children yes. versus God um, revealing to you, I am oh, that I am. It. And once I take you through this process, oh then I'm able to save your children oh still through you, my, my. but my way of oh, doing my. it, not yours. My, my. And, oh, geez, that is so good. Because even when you use the example again of Jesus and how it's a type and shadow, again, he had to suffer at the cross. Mm -hmm. He had to die. Mm -hmm. And what is this a representation of what, what uh, um, Job? I or myself mm -hmm. dead. I don't want nothing to me. Yes. I, and again, it's the same picture with us. The same picture with us. And as again, the trials of this life come. It brings us to the place of the humility of looking mm -hmm. to him mm -hmm. and him alone. Well, we rely upon him. And after that, the Lord restored Job's losses. His healing, mm -hmm. his, his cattle, his children said he gave double. <laughs> he said, he, he said that, that he had uh, uh, daughters that, that uh, uh, what did it say, that uh, there were none as fair, yeah. as beautiful mm -hmm. as the daughters that he produced. And he says that he restored all of that. And again, that is a, a picture of what God is the same way that as we go through the trial, going back to that, he says, you'll be what? Complete uh, and, and lacking nothing. Mm -hmm. He says, through the trials that you go through and the patience that it produces, the humble reliance. And so again, when I talk about that from the aspect of trials, what are we talking about? We're talking about healing today, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing, y'all. Again, that 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 he was sick, uh, 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 Paul was sick, all of these individuals, and that sickness brought them to the place of that. And again, just, and it, how can I say it? And and it was through them being brought to that place that again they were able to find that way of escape and overcome that sickness, mm -hmm. overcome whatever it was, and have that healing come. And so again, I want to I want to just take us real quick here. We're not going to be much longer because next time again we're going to talk about again the the other side of this. What have we been talking about? We're talking about now individuals who again are at the place of what that they truly are. are uh, they they hate evil. They they truly want the way of the Lord again. But again, that that trial that they're going through is bringing them to the place of humility. We're talking about them. We're not talking about those that are in there. We're going to talk about them next week. But I want to you look at this script. This is one of the most well-known scriptures concerning sickness and healing. And so look what it says. Is anyone among you sick? He says, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the first thing I, I want to just point out here, he says, if anyone is sick, has a sickness, let him call for the elders of the church. Again, one of the qualifications of, of an elder is what? To be able to teach. That, that's important. Because again, they need to understand all of this. Mm -hmm. They need to understand, again, the whole purpose of what that person, it, that, that, what that person is experiencing, God's goal of it. They need to understand that. And they need to express that mm -hmm. to the person. That's why you see in so many, in, in all the, if we go back here, in all these examples that we use, what he says, my brother, it's kind of all joy when you fall into various trials. See, they need to understand that. That when you fall into various trials, count it all joy knowing that it's the testing of your faith. They need to understand that. Mm -hmm. And they need to be able to express that. When that person is going through a sickness, they need to be able to express that. And so, going back over here, and so, he says, anointing him with all in the name of the Lord Jesus, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. Now, what most people use is, they talk about the prayer of faith, is, oh, I just believe God, I'm just, just believing in God, and God can just heal. No! That is not the prayer of faith. The prayer, the prayer of him. Yeah, ah, let me see if I can. Because see, I'm, I'm going to explain a whole lot more when we talk about it next week. But the, the prayer of faith is when you know and understand God's will and way. Yes. 
That's right. When you understand that, again, that trial is not unto death, that it has a purpose, right. you can, and, and you know that, that, again, that God is taking them through a process, and again, you can pray for that person assured of knowing the outcome. You get that? That's the prayer of faith. Not just, oh yeah, God just gonna heal. I just, I just, I'm just, I just, I just got big bad faith. No, it's because it, you get that. It's because no, I know the process. Y'all get that? I understand the process of how it works. I understand that yes, you, that person is going through a trial. That person is looking to the Lord. That person is being humble. I'm presenting that to them. I'm telling them, uh, don't, don't get weary by the various. Trials, that trial of sickness, I'm telling that to them, and, and as that is being told, they're again continuing to look to the Lord. I can pray for them and be assured, knowing that they'll be brought out. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Because I know the process. Amen. And so again, that's what he's talking about, the prayer of, of faith will save the sick. And who's going to raise them up? The Lord. The Lord is going to... Now, anytime you hear about raising somebody up, what, what, what? Okay, let me see if I can say it. When Jesus was raised, he was dead, right? Mm -hmm. What did he have to have imparted into him in order for him to be made alive? Mm -hmm. Life. Oh, yes. But the Spirit of God was the one that did it. Mm -hmm. But he had to have life. That's what he's talking about here. The prayer of faith will save the sick, sick and the Lord will impart life yes. mm -hmm. in that person. He's going he's to raise them up. Mm -hmm. And he says, and again, this goes into uh, uh, the, the other aspect, the other side. We're going to talk about ne next time. And if he has committed sin, he, he will be forgiven. Now, this forgiven is actually talking about us. He's saying, if he has committed sin, this is, this is the person who was in error. He's not talking about doing an act. He's talking about a person, a person who's in error. If, if you have a person who's in error, he says, Forgive him. It doesn't even say he will be forgiven. He says, forgive him. He's talking about y'all. Mm -hmm. And again, the picture of that, and I'm trying not to skip it to next week, but the picture of that is, remember the guy in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, where he says that who had, had the affair with his father's wife, and he said, remove him and, 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 and put him out. And, and he said, and that guy ultimately came back in 2 second, in, in, uh, second Corinthians, and, he, and Paul told them, forgive that brother. He repented, he had godly sorrow that led to his repentance. Well, that's what this is a picture of, someone who has been brought to that place. You see, I am skipping ahead the next week like I didn't mean to. So I'm not, I'm not even going to get into that no more. So verse 16, he says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You see, in order for me to explain all this, I got to go into what we're going to talk about next week. So I'm not really going to. But when he says here in verse 16, I'll say this. He says, confess your trespasses uh, to one another. Trespasses and sins are two different things. Mm -hmm. Trespass, it, the Greek word for trespass is the same word for fault. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember over in, in Galatians where it says, if anyone is overtaken in a fault, that's the same Greek word here for trespasses. And a lot of times, People make faults with sins. It's the same thing. Uh, but that's not what a fault is. When you think of a trespass, what, what, what is happening when a person trespasses? They're operating in an area they don't belong. Yes. That trust, and so that's a picture of what the Galatians were doing. What happened? They were had received the truth of God's grace. And now these individuals came in with presenting this false doctrine to them and had them operate outside of where Christ had called yes. them to. They were operating in trust and, and they, they were trespassing. They were operating outside of the, the, the direction God wanted them to go. And so again, I'm, see, I'm, I'm really talking about all we're going to talk about next week. But my point was just to show the aspect of verse 14 where it says, call for the elders. And elders, one of the qualifications is them being able to teach. Meaning they have to be able to understand that process mm -hmm. that people get sick yeah, and that right. pe and, and again and you have two groups you got the group over here that can be like a Paphroditus, Paul and that again they are 
are walking in the truth, but again, what? A greater humility is, is being worked in them, and you can tell them and talk to them. Don't be grieved by the various trials. Continue to look to him, and you can pray for that person, knowing that healing is coming. Just like with Job, that's still a process. Mm -hmm. that just like with Job, it was from chapter 2 all the way to verse 42. That was a process, but you can be assured of what's happening. Then you got the other individuals who have been given over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. And we're going to talk about them next week. But an elder needs to understand that and they can pray knowing that God will heal. Yeah. That God will. Go ahead, sis. I was just going to say, like, especially when you're talking about that part about what the elders did. And then in 15, and the prayer of faith uh, will say the sick and the Lord will raise him him up. Mm -hmm. And there's over in Romans when he talks about uh, how God, just as God raised Christ from the dead, yeah, that he will give life to your whole body. And I remember studying that out mm -hmm. and how the Holy Spirit was revealing to me. Because I would always say, Lord, why? When some people would be sick, I don't have an option to pray. Mm -hmm. Versus when some people are sick and I do have an option to pray. Mm -hmm. And that's when the Holy Spirit revealed to me, I raise people up mm -hmm. and give life to their mortal body. Mm -hmm. In other words, he was saying to me, I don't give life to a mortal body to continue in a mortal body. Oh, come on, I give life to a mortal body to manifest the life of Christ. And if that is not the path that oh. they're on, there will not be life given to that mortal body. That gave me a true revelation oh, and an understanding man. why some people will pass away man. on a sick bed versus some people being raised man. up on a sick bed. And, and that gave me a revelation even of this, how he will raise him up. So when you're being raised up from a situation like that, man. you better know it's to manifest Christ. Man. And if you're not being raised up and things are not turning out right, man. he's not going to give life man. to your mortal body so that you continue on in flesh. My mind. See, when we, oh Jesus, <laughs> when we get to part two of this, that's when we talk about a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. But that is so true. Because again, just like that, we, and, and you, you can even look at the story of Job. Again, it was after Job was brought to that place of humbly look. He says, I see you now. And now that shows that God can even do even more in Job's life after that. Mm -hmm. He brought he was brought to that place through the trial that he went through. And he and it's the same way with us as saved individuals. Just like what you just said. Mm -hmm. It is unto a purpose, unto a goal. Yes. It's unto a direction. It's not you know, just zapping folks just for the sake of folks just, just having everybody. It's, it's bigger than that. I always say we get, what, 70, 80 years here? And, but in comparison to it, you know, exactly. nothing. So God ain't just, if, if you look at it, the majority, I'm going to come right to you, Brother Rachel. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, the majority of the healings in the body were always, I only found one that wasn't, always unsaved people being brought to faith in Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Even with Jesus, the healers were always individuals where he says faith was working in them. They were starting to look to him. They were starting to trust him. And the healing was taking place. You only find one place, yeah, one place I looked up where a saved individual was shown to be healed. Everywhere else, there was an unsaved person who was hearing the gospel, coming to faith in Christ, and was healed. Everywhere else, it, it was only one other place where a person that was already saved, and they were healed. And this was a person who was described again as a faithful individual who was looking to the Lord and they had a sickness and they were healed. And but my point is that it shows that it's always unto a purpose. Mm -hmm. It ain't for the purpose of just me, just showing how great I am as a healer. Let me just go around and just lay an oil on folks just to say, show I got the gift to heal. No, it's always for a purpose of a person being uh, uh, ushered in Christ, ushered in a direction in Christ. And so I'm saying that that is the case even for those that are, again, who are, are faithful, who look to the Lord, but they're going through a sickness. Again, it is unto a, a purpose that, that they are going through that, and that purpose is the humility, just like any trial. Every last one of us have had trials, are going through trials, or will go through trials. And they are always unto a purpose. And that purpose is to bring all of us to a place of reliance upon him and looking to him. Why? 
so that just like Paul said, when as I realize my weakness, he can be strong in me. That's what he wants. Ultimately, at the end, I think you said that earlier, that, that, that he ultimately wants for Christ to be manifest in and through us. That's the main goal of all of this. And again, when it comes to those that are sick, that, that again, who are faithful, who truly look to the Lord, you can talk to them and you can say, don't be grieved. I know you may be grieved by the trial that you're going through, but continue to look to him. Mm-hmm. Continue to allow this to cause you to rely upon him. You can pray for that person, and it, it, and it can be a prayer of faith where you're assured mm-hmm. that healing is going to come to come to pass. Mm-hmm. You can you can do that. And uh, when, but next week we're going to talk about those that that may not be the case. They may be in error, and uh, and we have to talk about that as well. And so the last thing I want us to look at. Is this scripture right here? Because again, this is what we, we've been talking about in verse 10. He said, I, I'll start at verse 9. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? And when he's talking about being in subjection, he's actually talking about going through those trials. Remember, we said that God isn't the one behind it, but he uses it. He calls it the chastening of the Lord. That's what he calls it. Even though he's not the one making it happen, he calls it his chastening and his judging of his people. That's what he calls it, even though he's not the one that's causing it to happen. And he's and this the author is, is telling these Hebrews about that. He's saying, shall we not much more be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? He says, for they indeed, speaking of our earthly fathers, uh, chasing us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit. Meaning the trials that you're going through are for your profit. Mm-hmm. Yes. That are for your profit. He said, this is the profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. See, the profit isn't just the healing. The profit isn't being brought out of the trial or, or the circumstance. That's not the profit. The profit is, is that as a result of going through the trial, the humility that was caused, Cause you to cling and look to him even more. And as a result of that, you are partaking of his holiness. And then look what he says. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness, righteousness below though, to those who are trained by it. To those who are trained by the trial. How, my, how was Job trained by the trial? He was brought to the place of humility. How was uh, Paul trained by the trial? He was brought to the place where weakness revealed to him, started revealing the power of Christ in him. How was Epaphroditus? Humility was producing them. All of that was the training that brought them to the place where a peaceable fruit of righteousness could come to pass. And, and my point is that it is when a person is trained by and as you see a person being trained by, being humble, being look, looking to the Lord, again, you can be assured and pray for them that healing is going to come to pass. Mm-hmm. But people who just stubborn, prideful, want to hold on to that way, and we're going to talk about that next week. Mm-hmm. Y'all get that? Does that make sense for that, y'all? Mm-hmm. And, so, and, so, and so, again, the whole goal of this is that, that peaceable fruit of righteousness, is that so that that gold, that silver, that precious stone, who Christ is, can manifest through us. And that fire, again, burns up that any wood, hay, or straw that may be attached. So, and refines the gold, silver, and precious stone. The trials that we go through, even the trial of sickness, is for that purpose. Amen? Amen. Anything else before we get out of here? Go ahead, Brother Ray. I forgot I'm fine. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, but I like to get to give a testimony of uh, basically what's been going on. I mean, what had uh, as far as how good God is, and I got saved. I received Christ in my life in 1985. In 1990, five years later, I was diagnosed with um, for diabetes, sugar, and. Um, Amen. I have believed in my heart and 
I still do it to this day. That um, um, affliction came upon me after receiving Christ, mm -hmm. and then that I know that it is Christ who keeps me. Yes, yeah. because for let's see, from 1990 when I was diagnosed with sugar, I would say till about 2005, I've been very neglectful. Mm. I still kept eating like a mess, <laughs> still living like a mess, and um, it was not till um, basically 1910 that I start feeling the effects of my neglect. Yeah, 2010. <laughs> yeah, 2010. I started feeling the neglect uh, of the effects of my neglect. But nevertheless, in that, uh, as I've grown in Christ, I've known that unless it's God's will for this sickness to take me out, hey, I'm in a good place. Yes, yes. Because he had to let me know that in him, to die is gain, yes, to live yes. is Christ. Yes, yes, yes. So therefore, I know I don't lose. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. So it's... it's it's, it's good to know that uh, when you know that he's in control. It's not about sickness and health, mm -hmm. more or less. Mm -hmm. It's about life and death. Yes. Yeah, that's it. That's and it. So, at, so that's what I look forward to. Mm -hmm. Regardless if I'm taken out of this world, it's not going to be by, I do not believe it's going to be by my condition, yeah. but by his will. Amen. Amen. That's it. Amen. 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 That, that is so absolutely true. And that's, again, in the midst of anything, that mindset that God wants you to have. Mm -hmm. You continue to just, uh, again, look to him and knowing that he's going to manifest himself in and through you as, as, as you, you, you go through whatever it is that you go through. But again, understand the purpose of it. Humbling ourselves, looking mm -hmm. to him, and that he's made a way of escape. And that again, it is not unto death, just like you said. Mm -hmm. that, that, that ain't gonna be mm -hmm. the, the purpose, because again, what he's doing is it's a training of you, even though it may be painful yeah. at times, mm -hmm. it's a training that again is gonna cause you to continue to look humbly to him, rely upon him so that he can bring forth the peaceable fruit of righteousness mm -hmm. in and through you, because you're being trained by it. Amen. 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 Lord, we just bless you, we yes, honor Lord. you, we praise you. No better time than right no now. You the turn. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us.